Hello guys, welcome to the first episode of our configuration management control explanatory series. In this episode, we are going to go over the CM1 configuration management policy and procedure. And I do apologize for the delay in continuing this control series. But as always, a free way to support the channel is by hitting the subscribe button to help grow the channel if you haven't done so already. And thank you for your support. And also do hit or smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. Now, configuration management policy and procedure. But before we start, what is a configuration management control? Why do we need it? Configuration management control involves managing and controlling changes to a system configuration throughout its life cycle. That is, whatever configuration your system is, you know, built upon, you want to maintain, you know, that configuration as much as you can so that you don't introduce some, you know, unexpected or unwanted vulnerabilities or weakness to the system. This includes hardware, software, firmware, documentation, and other system elements. The goal of configuration management control is to establish and maintain system baseline configuration to ensure that only authorized changes are made to these system configurations. That is, you don't want to be having, you know, um, you know, like lack of oversight within your organization for all the systems whereby anybody or the system admins, engineers, the developers, people can just go into the system, especially those within the production environment, you know, for you know, this personnel to be able to, you know, change or modify the code or anything without an authorization or without going through the proper, you know, CCB change control board approvals and whatnot. So that is why this control is very, very important. Now, this control is selected for all the three control baseline in Rev4. That is the low security baseline, the moderate security baseline, and the high security baseline, you know, or the high system baseline. Now, likewise, it is selected for all the three baselines in Rev5 as well. The low, the moderate, and the high baselines. This CM1, you know, or the dash one control for configuration management policy and procedure is selected for all the baseline, rightly so. That makes sense, right? Now, let's read the control requirement for CM1 in 853 Rev 5. CM1 policy and procedure. The control says develop, document, and disseminate to assignment, organization, define personnel, or role. What are we selecting and what are we disseminating to? You select, you know, here, the selection here tells you that you either select one method of doing it or the other method of doing it. Whichever one you want to select is up to you. That is what we have the selection here. And if you notice, it says you develop and, you know, document and disseminate to organization defined personnel. What are we doing that? We're, we're developing a document at the organization level or a mission business process level or the system level configuration management policy. Now, again, you can either develop this uh, CM-1 at the organization level or the mission, mission business process level or the system level. But the most preferable one or the most common one is dash one controls are normally, you know, developed at the organizational level or at the, or the organization level right okay so moving on you develop a configuration management policy that addresses purpose scope roles responsibility management commitment uh, coordination among organizational entities and compliance and also b this is a new control parameter that was added if you notice it was not in there or it wasn't in rev4 and REF5, you notice that they added this B parameter that says it's consistent with applicable federal laws, executive orders, directives, regulations, policies, standards, and guidelines. And also a procedure to facilitate the implementation of the configuration management policy and the associated configuration management controls. Now, moving on. This parameter was not also in REF4, but they, they just added this in REF5 designate an assignment organization defined official 
whatever official you want to des uh, designate is going to be the CISO or it's going to be the system owner. Is going is it going to be the ISO? Whoever the organization chooses to designate to develop this documentation or to manage the development documentation and dissemination of the control or the configuration management policy and procedure that is another parameter that was added now moving on it says c review and update the current configuration management one policy assignment organization defined frequency that is up to you whatever frequency you want to review it is based on the organizational discretion the anytime again anytime you see the assignment is based on your or the organization's discretion to choose however however way they want to do it so the organization policy and also this element of the parameter was also added quite uh, you know in ref 5 it wasn't there in ref 4 in ref 4 it just stated that you have to review based on your discretion of the frequency that you chose within your organization but this element was added and following assignment organization defined element whatever element you know that you're gonna you know include or that's gonna necessitate the review of your policy such as you know the changes in the applicable laws changes in executive orders changes in directives changes in uh, security regulations policy standard and guidelines you know or identification of evolving threats and so on and so forth these are some of the things that will require you to update your policy all right moving on now let's look at the discussion same here as the procedure so organization define frequency and following organization define you know event or you know whatever is going to be the, the reason why you're going to change your procedure before the assigned frequency usually procedures are reviewed and update updated around a year one year annually for the policy typically industry best practice is three years so if you're going to review those less than the three years or the one year then it has to be some sort of an organization defined event that okay changes in the policy identification of threats and whatnot right all right so now moving on the discussion configuration management policy and procedure address the control in the cm family that are implemented within the system and organization the risk management strategy is an important factor in establishing such policies and procedures Policies and procedures contribute to the security and privacy assurance. Therefore, it is important that security and privacy programs collaborate on the development of configuration management policy and procedure. Now, take note, security and privacy program policy and procedures at the organization level are preferable in general and may obviate the need for mission or system specific policy and procedure. That is, if you do your CM-1 or any policy and procedure at the organizational level, you don't need to do it on the mission, business, you know, level or the system level. All right, moving on. The policy can be included as part of the general security and privacy policy or be represented by multiple policies that reflect the complex nature of organization. Procedures can be established for security and privacy program, for mission business processes, and for systems if needed. Procedures describe how the policies or controls are implemented and can be directed at the individual or role that is the object of the procedure. Procedures, take note, can be documented in system security plan, system security or privacy plans, or in one or more separate document. Events that may precipitate an update to configuration management policy and procedure include, but not limited to, you know, assessment or audit findings, security incidents or breaches, or changes in applicable laws, executive orders, directives, regulations, policies, standards, and guidelines. Simply restating controls does not constitute an organizational policy or procedure. The related control for the CM-1 control is the PM9, PS8, SA8, and SI12. Control enhancement, none. These are the references that you can read, you know, to have more clarification or, you know, more reference reading for the CM-1 control. 
All right, so now moving on. Some importance of configuration management controls. Consistency and standardization. So configuration management ensure that systems and software are consistently configured according to established standard and baselines. Risk management, right? By controlling changes to the configuration, organization can manage and mitigate risk associated with unauthorized or unintended alteration to the baseline code or software code or whatever it is that is the underlying baseline of the system. If you don't control it, then it's going to be, uh, you're going to have a lot of unauthorized or unintended alterations to your baseline configuration or the code. All right, moving on. Change control and impact analysis. It enables organization to assess the impact of the proposed changes before implementation. That is why we have the CCB, the change control board meetings or, you know, change control review, you know, meetings that kind of review the proposed changes or even the patches, the update to the system, you know, system shutdown, system restart, rebooting, all of these things will be discussed in the change control board to make sure that all the risk associated with these activities are all reviewed and you know, uh, analyze prior to that changes being implemented within the system or on the system. Efficient deployment and rollback. Configuration management facilitate efficient deployment of changes to the system. It also provides mechanisms for roll, rolling back changes in case of unexpected issue occurs or reducing downtime and minimizing the impact on operations. All right, now let's look at some of the control assessment approach for the CM-1, which is the same as we, we, we saw in the AC-1 control. Now, to ensure the proper implementation and optimal performance of this control, covering both its design and operational effectiveness, we take the following steps. Obtain and examine the configuration management policy and procedure, that is the Dash-1 control. Obtain and examine system security plan, Ensure the documentations have been reviewed per the review frequency and are current with all the required signatures. If there is any organizational defined event that occur during the you know a period of your assessment, you know you have to review what are some of the events that occur. If those events occur, the organization or the agency did they review and update their policy and procedure documentation. You know stuff like that right and also uh the last one here is you ensure policy and procedure documents are disseminated to the appropriate personnel a lot of time you know they will have it on the sharepoint and a lot of people will have access to the sharepoint if that's the case you can ask for like a photo uh, like a screenshot of uh you know the, the the people that have access to these documentation in the sharepoint location it's easier to do that they can give you a screenshot of the document location on the SharePoint and also all the people that have access to this document on the SharePoint. That is how you verify that this documentation or this document, you know, was uh, disseminated to the appropriate personnel within the organization. That's it for this first episode in our Configuration Management Control Family Explanatory Series. Please do like, subscribe, share and comment below this video so the YouTube algorithm can expose these videos to lots of people who could benefit from these videos. About 75% of my viewers are not actually subscribers. Please do subscribe to help grow the channel. And also remember, keep chasing your greatness and never stop believing in yourself. Thank you and I'll see you in our next episode. That will be the CM-2. Thank you.